Hey guys, welcome back to Electrical Car Repair Life. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video guys to any of you having a Kia Sportage, Kia Sorento with a 2.4 GDI engine guys. And you need to remove or replace oil pump because you have a bad oil pump. Uh, or you need to remove the oil pump to replace the timing chain for the oil pump and the balance shaft. Stay with us, we'll explain step by step how to do that guys. Uh, because it will take quite a bit of work. It's not complicated, but it's just time consuming. Okay, and we will explain how to do it. You need to remove quite a few components, so we're going to start on that. We'll get to the oil pump and show you guys step by step how to remove, okay, in case you need to replace that oil pump. So this should work on Kia Sportage and Kia Sorento different years. For instance, they started using it in early 2012 all the way to 2016, 17, depending on the market, guys. And that's a 2.4 GDI engine. So before we start, let me introduce you to the channel. Every single car we get at the garage, guys, we take them completely apart and we make at least two to 300 free repair videos. Why we do all that? Simply because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can. How we need in return, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, that way we can keep providing this free information to you. Also, guys, if you want to buy parts or tools for a really good price and quick shipping as well, check out the link in the description of the video below and you can see where we get all our tools and parts from. Specifically, this is an engine out of a 2013. Kia that we'll be demonstrating on and with that being said okay uh, if you have uh, a Kia guys or other vehicle check our main channel auto repair guys we have videos that have helped more than 120 million people guys that can save you thousands of dollars so let's start on it now so this right here guys is a 2.4 GDI engine we have it out of the vehicle with the cooling system everything that the way it comes from the vehicle so we can clearly show with great detail okay what uh, what we're going to do uh, and uh, we'll be having videos about rebuilding that engine and fixing almost anything on it for any of you that ask me guys in the comment section below recently we've been getting quite a bit of response uh, comments to uh, what do what do we recommend for diagnostics on these modern vehicles that's the one that we use daily guys it works on Kia and almost uh, almost uh, any car you can think of okay let me just exit and I will show you uh, right here it's amazing too that can pay itself off in one time use check out the link in the description of the video below if you want to check the current price and the functions number one we need to remove the upper engine cover grab and pull it out it attaches okay to these four posts right here what do you need to do next guys okay in order to remove the upper valve cover you will need to disconnect your car battery. Let's explain why. Because you'll be dealing with the uh, fuel pump here as well. You need to remove the high pressure fuel pump. So disconnecting the car battery can reduce the risk of catching your vehicle on fire. Also work on the engine when it's completely cold. On these modern cars, it matters which battery terminal you disconnect and reconnect first. If you do it wrong, you can cause damage to the engine computer and the electrical system. So if you don't know which battery terminal to disconnect first, we have a special video that explains that and we'll put the link in the description of the video below. Once you do that, okay, we're going to disconnect the vacuum hose coming out of the valve cover. Okay, right here, perfect. Another one, okay, that we have. Okay, we need to disconnect the PCV hose right here. Great. Next, uh, you have the uh, fuel line right here, the low pressure fuel line. If you don't know how to disconnect it, we have a special video that explains that on World Mechanics, how to disconnect uh, the fuel line. For the high pressure fuel line, three quarter inch wrench, you'll be under pressure, always wear gloves and eye protection. Why we don't? Don't ask guys, but you should. Okay, disconnect that. Okay, you disconnect that uh, fuel volume sensor right here. Okay, great, just like that. And what you need to do now, okay, 10 millimeter socket. And we need to slowly remove the pump a little bit on each side. You grab that fuel pump and it comes out. I recommend to inspect your tappet right here, the cam follower, because that's a weak spot on those sometimes and that can develop an engine noise and rattle as well. So we'll get it out, okay, to inspect it later. Next. We need to disconnect that wiring harness that goes to the uh, exhaust variable timing solenoid. We need to uh, disconnect the wiring harness from the upper valve cover. Okay, perfect, like that. What we need to do next, we need to remove the ignition coils so that those great things, okay, check this thing out. You need to pull them all the way to the back. Then you press in the middle okay and you disconnect it so we do that to all four ignition coils guys okay so 
10 millimeter socket we're going to disconnect that wiring harness that goes to the high pressure fuel pump so that's what we're doing now okay great what else guys now this one we can flip it okay on the side so it's out of the way at that point okay we need to remove the ignition coils 10 millimeter socket just remove the bolt on each ignition coil four bolts four ignition coils or the other way around four ignition coils four bolts then you can just simply grab the ignition coil okay and pull them out at that point most of the okay most of the final work is done now we need to remove i think 20 22 bolts quite a few bolts guys for the valve cover so we're going to start okay with the ones in the middle let's start here okay you have bolts that some people easily forget and one of them it's hard to miss this side right there okay here this one and we go to the outside so now we're just removing all of the bolts make sure you don't drop anything in the high pressure fuel pump hole there because you'll go directly in the camshaft and that can cause engine damage and careful not to drop your bolts too Alright, you grab each one of the bolts, easily remove them, because if they fall you can easily lose them as well. We have two more for the fuel pump right here that we need to remove. Okay, and this one too. Now we have two more that we need to remove right here. Perfect. Now you will leak some oil out, be prepared. I was been sitting for a while, so we won't have so much engine oil up here. Need to pull a little bit of room. Okay, to get it out gently okay okay perfect this is guys the valve cover valve cover gasket that's what the engine looks like as well in order to remove the crankshaft pulley guys okay there is a special tool that uh, most people will recommend to use okay because uh, without it okay you can have a really hard time okay removing that pulley and let me explain okay what the tool looks like uh, you will need to remove your intake manifold remove the engine starter we have the special video on the channel how to remove uh, uh, intake manifold and engine starter check it out if you need help with that and then you have that special tool that goes where the engine starter is okay and it holds the flywheel so it doesn't move the other two guys that you can use okay it can go on the flywheel from underneath the oil pan that you can use it as well if you don't have any of those tools i will not recommend to do the job but what we use here and again don't need to do it guys okay with the belt still installed we get an air impact okay and uh, with the compressor you just are going to take it loose now you will not be able to torque it correctly later so i recommend still to get the two but we've done it multiple times with the impact we haven't had a problem but doesn't mean that you will not have one so uh, we pretty loose in hours already now that's the tensioner we can go ahead remove the belt and once we remove the belt we can continue with the next step to remove that uh, that pulley right here okay perfect just like that so let's go ahead okay get this one uh, loose it should be just almost like hand tight the impact got it loose so now we're going to go ahead okay and get it loose with a little impact now yeah right there and it came out 
Now your timing chain will not skip or anything like that. It's not like one of those Mazda 4 designs where with the moment you take this one off, the timing is completely done. Okay, and you should definitely follow timing procedures. No, this one is not because that's a key pulley and you have key timing chain components you can see on the back side. Okay, right there. So that's how we remove the pulley. Now next for the timing cover, okay, according guys, okay, to our experience and uh, even almost any manual that you can find, uh, you can remove the cover itself, okay, without removing your pen, but resealing it, okay, you may have troubles having an oil leak later. So it's recommended to remove the oil pen and then remove the timing cover because otherwise you can easily, guys, develop oil pen, valve cover leak, uh, timing cover leaks that uh, you will have to redo the work again in the future and you probably don't want to do that work twice guys believe me because that takes quite a bit of work so we will go ahead next step and remove the oil pan so now for the oil pan guys let's explain what we need to do right here with the engine removed we can clearly guys show you what we need to do you don't need to remove your ac compressor we'll need to remove okay the bolts right here underneath the two bolts okay that hold the ac compressor because they mount to this bracket that mounts to the timing cover and the engine block and that mount will come off will need to come off because we have hidden bolts underneath as well so 12 millimeter socket and we're going to remove the two bolts for the ac compressor there okay check it out Perfect, they're out. Now, next step, we have these bolts right here, again with the 12 millimeter socket, big ones that we need to remove, we'll need to get an extension. And that's the one that holds the bracket, okay, you can see in place. Let's go ahead and do that. Two, so we have, I think we have four bolts. Number three right there in the middle and one on the other side. Nope, almost perfect that's number four now that mount will come off you can see like that <coughs> later make sure you stand to the end we'll spend one of the best silicone to reseal it that black one is terrible i personally don't like it and i'll recommend the one that the manufacturers use quite often as well that gray one okay it's my favorite it's our favorite now guys here we need to remove we have actually two huge bolts with a 12 point socket guys okay i think it's a 12 point socket two of them that actually those bolts guys they mount all the way in the engine block and they're quite long so we'll need to go ahead remove those you may start leaking engine oil now we forgot to say but you need to drain your engine oil before you start working on that make sure you don't have engine oil in the oil pan how you drain the oil okay with the engine in the vehicle make sure it's cool remove the drain plug right here and drain the oil we already pre-drained ours that's pretty simple procedure so again make sure you drain yours then you get a 10 millimeter socket guys and you start going all the way around okay and we're going to start removing them okay all the bolts now so let's do that now we'll explain where every bolt is located how many bolts you have and all that stuff some of those don't come out due to the fact that there is actually silicone sealant engine sealant so let me show you where we are okay trying to visualize it now that's over the transmission side there let me see if if we can come on this side okay removing these bolts now next okay let me show you where those are you can kind of like see those here on the back side we have the exhaust manifold and everything removed we missed one right here i can see it now that open may be really stuck depending on the silicone and all that stuff so ours started coming loose but if it's really stuck you might get a screwdriver and pry it out once you remove all the bolts make sure all the bolts are out otherwise you can break things 
and later if you bend the oil pan it's metal one it's fine you can always straighten it because it's metal pan okay perfect now we'll grab ours we shouldn't have too much oil left just a little bit perfect and okay you can see the oil pan came out now the correct thing to do okay let's get the silicone the sealant i'll show you what we use you need to clean when you're ready to install that open clean everything here really good make sure all that stuff on the inside come out always apply on the inside okay and around the bolts a little bit as well uh, but make sure you have on the inside for sure and go a little bit around the bolts clean the engine block and the timing cover as well clean everything with rubbing alcohol and make sure it's not greasy at all it's super dry clean shiny the open as well and that's the silicone that we use the high temp gray silicone that's uh, that's amazing guys i'll put a link in the description of the video below where you can get it from we uh, used it on multiple bmw's porsche vehicles for a long time and we haven't had any problems it uh, holds up to 600 uh, degrees fahrenheit it's a gasket maker or dressing as well so uh, you can see that's how you guys do it so now the uh, water pump guys right here you need to pre-loosen these three bolts before you remove the belt that's a good idea to watch the video before you do things so you see what mistakes we make uh, but uh, if you pre-loosen these three bolts with a wrench when you have the belt the, the pulley will not be spinning now we have the engine out so we can clearly use the impact which makes things way easier than having it in the engine bay but it's still practically the same procedure you will need to just get them loose before you remove the belt perfect now let's start with okay with the hardware pulley tensioner pulley we need to remove those as well we will need to remove the mount for the engine mount now this one is actually uh, this one was reverse threaded guys bolt okay right here that's reverse threaded bolt okay and let's go ahead Get it loose. Okay, let's see. Okay, perfect. Reverse thread it, just remember that. Great. You need to remove the pulley in order to remove the tensioner because underneath it you have one 10 millimeter bolt that you cannot get. That's a normal threaded bolt right here after that. So that's a regular bolt, but when you remove the tensioner, I want to show you one specific place where you should place it once you remove it guys otherwise okay if you if you install it guys at the wrong place later you have problems the tensioner has one okay high spot let me focus here quick right there and it goes okay in that hole okay over there so make sure you place it there later let's remove the bracket for the engine mount right here so 14 millimeter socket here and we're going to remove four bolts okay that's bolt number four perfect now since we have that 14 millimeter socket we'll keep using it and uh oh those are 12 those are 12. we need to get a 12 now and all these bolts the far ones they're with 12. this one you don't need to remove it i think this one stays like that we'll check but we'll see i think this one stayed Okay, all of them are out. Now, 10 millimeter after that, we're going to switch to 10 millimeter. And uh, there is one trick to removing that timing cover. Many people will break it and we'll explain why. We used to break one or two in the past, so we learned that the hard way. And we want to share our experience with you guys. okay so looking at it you have two metal guides right here one over there one over here if you get penetrating spray you can spray them and let them soak always try to apply a little bit of pressure where the guides are okay and wiggle it because 
if you bend too much that's aluminum that cracks super easily guys ours came out easy but you can have so much corrosion okay and so much silicone that it can be really really stuck like this one it has quite a bit of corrosion you can see clean them good and lubricate them okay and wipe them again before we install things together every time you remove that timing cover you need to clean all that silicone guys clean it really good scrape it really good and clean it with rubbing alcohol the same thing you need to do okay to the engine block and the cylinder head you need to clean everywhere really good and uh, we use the gray silicone which is amazing we'll put a link in the description of the video below guys once everything is clean you're going to apply on the inner side of the bolts okay on the inner side of the bolts everywhere okay right here on this bolt as well don't forget this bolt okay and this and this one bolts the inner bolts go around okay everything should be clean apply and you're ready to put it on you can see but that's how you guys remove the, the timing cover if you need to remove timing chain components remove cylinder head or if you just need to fix an oil leak on the timing cover so you can see we got to that point okay uh, valve cover has been removed timing cover oil pan all that is out guys now for the timing chain i will re recommend guys to replace not just the main timing chain and components we recommend to replace the oil pump uh, timing chain and this uh, chain also is for the oil pump and the balance shaft so uh, it's very important to replace that one as well especially the tensioner okay and uh, the components around it the chain itself rarely stretches there uh, but uh, uh, we recommend at least to replace the tensioners guys uh, tensioner arm and the guide as well because they can malfunction from all that heat okay they can become fragile the tensioner can uh, actually fail itself not keep enough tension on the oil pump chain and you can lose oil pressure now we'll demonstrate how to remove everything from start to finish so stay with us we'll explain how to do that we'll need to actually even remove the oil pump so next we're going to remove the timing chain okay so uh now okay let's uh, verify now something guys we're okay we're at the uh, tdc point top dead center how we can uh, how you can verify that okay you can put okay the timing cover we can put that timing cover and uh, you can okay get it on okay perfect like that there are two ways people do them uh, one is a TDC and ready to install the new chain later. Okay, perfect, like that. Or, or the other one is, uh, you can see the T-mark right here needs to, needs to match with that tooth on the marked pulley. Or the other uh, screw that they do guys, okay, they bring, uh, and they remove the spark plugs, you bring the engine to, uh, all the pistons to be even, that way you cannot bend any valves, which you can do as well. Uh, but later when you're installing the chain okay there is uh, some things that you need to do so now we can do both ways guys we recommend okay to go in the middle so now we have the spark plugs removed on all the cylinders so we're going to go ahead and verify all the pistons are in the middle this one number of one and four are up so let's turn the engine turn 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 okay like that up okay the pistons are down that means guys okay that actually now the pistons are in the middle so uh, if something goes wrong you're not going to bend the valve easily okay but you need to uh, check out the video about the timing marks and the timing chain installation that's going to teach you how to avoid uh, costly damage to your engine so we're going to remove the uh, the timing cover here okay and we can go ahead and remove now the timing chain tensioner because otherwise if you have it at TDC sometimes what can happen if you accidentally jump the timing on the on the camshafts okay the valves are spring loaded and you can bend things guys so uh, you can bend valves and you don't want that to happen okay tensioner is out we're going to go ahead remove the guy the tensioner arm guide right here so one bolt 10 millimeter perfect we can pull that one out then we have one two three bolts right there that we need to remove all right perfect now 
that timing chain will come out okay that's the main timing chain you can just lift it up guys perfect just like that next what do we need to do oil pump chain okay let's go ahead and remove the tensioner tensioner arm and the guide as well okay that tensioner okay you need to wipe everything it can come out okay it just has a spring inside this is not even a hydraulic tensioner okay this tensioner is just spring loaded that's it nothing else the other one this is a hydraulic tensioner that's controlled by oil pressure this one is not So that's why it's a good idea to replace it as well and not uh, just the main timing chain okay when you do that job so now okay you can see everything is marked because this is the oil pump and the counterbalance shaft that makes your engine extremely smooth otherwise you have terrible vibrations okay if you don't set everything correctly later so definitely guys we'll have a video how to set the timing timing marks and install the timing chain now in order to remove that timing chain we need to remove the oil pump you cannot remove the timing chain without removing the oil pump and uh, you cannot uh, do it uh, no matter what you do you never remove that nut because everything is here where it's supposed to be otherwise okay the counterbalance shaft can spin and what will happen uh, you will not be able to balance your engine and you will need to buy a new water uh, new oil pump and balance shaft assembly so 12 millimeter socket now oil pump bolts will be extremely tight okay so be prepared guys for that okay extremely tight and after that they will loosen up a little bit that's a 12 point socket 12 millimeter 12 point socket Okay, one second, I'm trying to show you where all the bolts are. Okay. Now, we're going to get the ratchet guys, okay, the impact, and we're going to remove them. You can leak oil out, that oil pump assembly is heavy. On the last bolt it's important to hold it and remember where you move the bolts from because they need to go in exactly in the same order okay that you remove them perfect okay it's getting there so the last bolt we need to hold the pump remember okay check this thing out how long that bolt is perfect now let's see if it's going to start getting loose okay now okay now let's see if it's still holding i think we have one bolt somewhere right there one bolt it's still there, we forgot one. We forgot to pre loosen it as well. So, seven bolts that we have that hold it in place. Now, on that last one, we need to hold the oil pump. It's going to come loose. So. <coughs> now, we're going to get the pump, come in an angle. Okay, that drop the back side down. And when we do that, we're going to get the chain out. Okay. 
timing chain out okay and that's your pump assembly with the balance shaft now that's the sprocket for the main timing chain this is the sprocket with the other timing chain for the oil pump okay you can see it just like that so this is it guys you can see this is the oil pump assembly right here now uh, that's everything you can see where all the seven bolts are one two three four five six seven towards the back side okay th those are all seven bolts uh, you have the oil pump integrated inside and you have the uh, you actually guys have balance shafts right here two balance shafts with counterweights that is going that are going to make your engine really smooth and it will counterbalance the vibrations caused by the crankshaft so everything needs to be perfect never guys okay never ever remove that nut here as i said because otherwise you're going to mess up okay your counterbalance shafts okay and you'll never be able to get it at the same location so uh, uh that's how you guys do it if you need to purchase one we'll put the link in the description of the video below where you can get an uh, oil pump from check it out thank you for watching and see you guys next time